Yo, check it out, I gotta speak the truth About the hardest working small channel in the crypto booth He's the crypto father, the one and only Putting in the hours, never getting lonely He's grinding day and night Welcome back to the Crypto Father channel I am the Crypto Father and today is the 7th of May Yesterday was a Monday and on Monday I usually do the crypto roundup but since I was a bit of a sleepless bozo last night on, on Sunday, I got up at like four o'clock in the morning and started recording. Um, there was a project that I wanted to talk about and that was Silencio. And so I skipped the whole crypto roundup. So today is the crypto roundup video. So make sure to smash up the like, subscribe to the channel and get ready for some juicy newsy. Let's go. Let's start off with a quick look at the crypto market uh, we're at 2.4 trillion dollars it hasn't really changed much uh despite the fact that it's green the market cap or overall hasn't budged a lot um to break past the 2.4 trillion trading volume is also quite low 85 billion comparatively low i mean it could be lower but uh it is what it is Bitcoin's trading at 63,000 again ethereum broke above 3,000, so that's good um bnb is still in red solana green again at 154 it seems to be recovering quite well solana's got nice bounces look at that 14 percent on the seven day so it drops but then it does rebounds quite quickly with the exception of lido staked um and some of the stable coins in bnb uh bnb is dumping because of the cz news most likely the four months jail sentence uh, everything else is looking to be quite green so that's pretty good happy days happy birthday bitcoin 15 years in bitcoin blockchain hits major transaction milestone apparently we exceeded 1 billion transactions since uh the genesis block in 2009 when pseudonym bitcoin creator satoshi nakamoto introduced the cryptocurrency's white paper bitcoin has significantly reshaped the financial ecosystem attracting millions of users who can continually engaged in in this trend for on may 5th blockchain bitcoin's blockchain hit a historic milestone achieving more than 1 billion network transactions what does it mean for everybody else nothing it just means that it processed 1 billion transactions in 15 years which is only one seventh of the world's population one seventh or something like that what is what are we at almost 8 billion people now this is uh something that's new uh hitting the crypto news scene crypto ro unveiling uh reports unveiling the first bitcoin backed synthetic dollar offering a massive 25 percent yield exploring the sustainability and yield generating capabilities of usdh the first bitcoin native synthetic dollar hermatica is launching the first bitcoin backed synthetic us dollar with yield generating capabilities the synthetic dollar usdh will offer users yields of up to 25 percent how is that going to work exactly where is this 25 percent coming from Hermetica revealed plans to introduce, introduce the inaugural Bitcoin-backed synthetic US dollar, which also uh, possesses the ability to generate yield. This cutting-edge development is part of the ongoing evolution of decentralized finance This that is rooted in Bitcoin. The synthetic dollar known as UADH is expected to be released in June. It is predicted to provide users with yields as high as 25% as per Hermetica's announcement. This innovative synthetic dollar will allow Bitcoin holders to keep and earn yield on their US dollars without having to rely on the banking system or delve into non-Bitcoin related products. Now this should be interesting. I can see a lot of backlash coming from the banking system on that if this proves to be successful that is. This information was shared by Jacob Schillinger. Uh, the founder and CEO of Hermetica Lab, Schillinger stated, USDH will play a pivotal role in bringing increased liquidity and new use uh, cases to Bitcoin DeFi, allowing Bitcoiners to trade, lend and transact in a dollar asset that is fully backed by Bitcoin. Hermetica is a DeFi protocol native to stacks on Bitcoin and is part of the broader Bitcoin DeFi movement this movement seeks to introduce DeFi capabilities to the world's inaugural blockchain network the introduction of the first bitcoin backed synthetic dollar follows the launch of uh, athena's usde which offered a 27.6 yield to for holders the high yield sparked concerns about the protocol sustainability and similar concerns may arise 
uh, for Hermetica's USDH as its 25% annual percentage yield is significantly higher than the 20% yield offered by anchor protocol on terra usd prior to the collapse of this uh, algorithmic stablecoin issuer terra in may 2022 however schillinger assures that the yield is sustainable and is derived from futures funding rates he explained this bitcoin native uh, yield fluctuates with the market's demand for long leverage our backtest data from january 21 to march 24th shows an average api of 11 percent into the 2022 bull market the annual return was 26 percent um yeah okay but so we're looking at a company that is trying to basically monetize uh bitcoin obviously um and i guess they're relying on the hopes that they'll be able to to do more by trading the Bitcoin, like, I mean, where are they going to get the yields from? Even if people stake Bitcoin, technically, you know, nobody else is allowed to use it unless the company decides that they're now like FTX that they're able to trade that the stake Bitcoin um, and in hope of recouping the money required to pay all the stakes. I mean, 25% on Bitcoin is quite a lot. Or will the 25% interest be paid in the USD? Um, H. Schillinger further stated that the demand for Bitcoin futures will keep USDH yield sustainable. The yield is sustainable due to the structural demand for long leverage in the Bitcoin futures market. More protocols are increasingly building more utility and DeFi capabilities around Bitcoin, the world's most secure uh, blockchain network. Schillinger believes that the introduction of ordinals was among the most important catalysts for BTCFI. He said, we believe Bitcoin DeFi will match and eclipse the size of Ethereum DeFi in the next five years. We're already seeing months where ordinal trading volumes are higher than volumes of her Ethereum and Solana FTs combined with over 1 trillion in latent BTC capital. Bitcoin DeFi is primed for explosive growth. Yeah, that's a bit of a concern, I think. 25%. Uh, how are they going to manage that? How is this yield going to be generated by the company? uh by hermetica uh in order to pay the stakers i think a little bit more needs to be disclosed before uh anybody starts jumping in and throwing their bitcoin at this company in exchange for the uh synthetic dollars but the ideal incentive is there so that's interesting everybody's talking about grayscale again um this has been circulating people are, are saying that the bull market is back on because of grayscale grayscale finally turns it around gbtc sees inflows uh, for first time since spot etf conversion the grayscale bitcoin trust experienced its first net inflow since con converting to a spot etf do we just enter a more bullish paradigm or is there an alternative explanation for this unprecedented unexpected inflow bitcoin was much less so, uh, institutionalized during the last bull market but investors could still leverage gbtc to gain bitcoin exposure through a traditional brokerage account at this time the new buys were restricted to accredited investors and subject to a lockup period initially 12 months and later reduced to six months before they could sell those shares on the market causing shares to trade at a massive premium uh, to net asset value as retail investors feverishly sought to ape bitcoin through a convenient and regulated avenue unfortunately for holders this premium turned to a discount as demand for bitcoin waned toward the end of february 2021 with the instrument's lack of redeemability preventing its market price from converging to nav Friday's inflow snapped the nearly 80-day outflow streak that GBTC had experienced since redeemability uh, was enabled upon conversion to a spot ETF and was the first time Grayscale purchased Bitcoin for this product since the premium closed over three years ago. Eric Balkhaus on Twitter reports that the uh, first time ever 1D flows all green, no red for the Bitcoin bunch. Over 95% of the ETF investors uh, held during what was a pretty nasty and persistent downturn will same happen next time who knows but track record says it will be pretty high percent again as we said outflows will happen so will inflows but over time two things tend to be true for etfs net growth and relatively strong hands
Robinhood receives enforcement notice from the SEC for alleged securities violations. The SEC doesn't stop and they just keep uh, targeting more and more crypto exchanges, crypto businesses. It's not the first time that Robinhood's been the target of uh, allegations. And uh, Robinhood Crypto, the digital asset arm of the popular trading platform Robinhood Markets, has been uh, served with a Wells notice by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The securities regulator, regulator informed the company that it plans to file an enforcement action over alleged securities violations. Robinhood said it's determined to prove just how weak any case against Robinhood crypto would be on both the facts and the law. What's going to come of this? I guess we'll see. But there is SEC back at work. SEC under fire for Wells notice abuse as it hunts Robinhood. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I reported on, uh, it was a report that uh, one or two lawyers, SEC lawyers uh, left or they were going to be fired um, because they basically forged, um, they used fraudulent allegations against a cryptocurrency entity. Um, and uh, the institution basically had to let them go, quote unquote, um, or they were, or they had a choice to step down. And so they basically stepped down, I guess, to mitigate the embarrassment of being fired from the institutions, which would probably leave a pretty, you know, bad blemish on their record. So the SEC is targeting Robinhood's crypto division in new enforcement actions. Industry legal experts have questioned the SEC's broader actions as abusive. The firm has expressed disappointment with the commission's approach to regulations. Silva Herzog emphasized Robinhood CEO Dan Gallagher's former position as an ex-US President Obama appointed SEC commissioner, emphasizing that the present SEC chair, Gary Gensler, may have taken on a significantly stronger legal battle than he can handle. Sui, I made a video on Sui just a while ago uh, as a rival to Solana, and apparently there were some allegations that uh, Sui was doing something shady. There was a sh bit of a problem with their token supply. The network emphasized the transparency of its distribution, reaffirming commitment to transparency. I don't know, are these things written by AIs? I mean, it, it's... Uh, What's the excessive transparency? The SUI network is facing scrutiny among suspicions regarding its native SUI token supply. The ecosystem recently marked a significant milestone celebrating its first anniversary. SUI has taken steps to address concerns regarding its token distribution. Central to Bond's apprehensions are questions uh, about SUI's token distribution with claims that 80% of its allocated to the network's founders, Bonds asserted that 160 million of SUI's total 10, uh, 10 billion uh, went to its for-profit creator, Mistin Labs. At the same time, another 600 million was earmarked was earmarked for early contributors, in addition to a significant 1.5 billion allocated to venture capitalists. Bonds emphasized that this grants the founders control of most of the supply without lock-ins or regular guarantees, posing a significant risk to holders if dumped. Uh, countering the claim, SUI emphasized that its creator, Mistin Labs, does not control the SUI Foundation Treasury, committee, reserve, stake subsidies, or any tokens allocated to investors. SUI Foundation is the largest holder of locked tokens, which will be unlocked in accordance with the public emission schedule, stated the network, adding that there is no mystery about token ownership. Every token that will be released has been allocated. South Korea's evolving donation laws. South Korea has actively promoted philanthropy by providing donors with tax incentives and other benefits. These incentives aim to stimulate charitable giving and support various social causes ranging from education and healthcare to environmental conservation the ministry of public administration has revealed that some amendments to south korea's donations act have been filed but restrict the use of crypto assets for donations naver suggested that starting from july 2024 those who wish to donate to charitable organizations or causes can use various new methods, including department store gift vouchers, stocks and loyalty points, but not crypto assets such as Bitcoin. The latest updates to donation laws showcases a nuances appro nuanced approach signaling 
uh, both recognition of the growing significance of cryptocurrencies and the need for regulatory prudence. The Korean government has been trying to clamp down on tax evasion uh, through the use of cryptocurrencies and this is one way in which people I guess were trying to do it by creating crypto donations. Right now they're changing the laws here and I guess you can donate stuff in the forms of store gift vouchers, stocks and loyalty points but not in crypto uh, directly. There's a new development in the incident where the SEC hacked and announced a fake Bitcoin spot ETF approval. The infamous SEC hack that occurred on January 9th. The hack, the hack which led to an unauthorized early announcement regarding the approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs is being investigated by several outside agencies including the SEC, the Office of Inspector General and the FBI. According to Coindesk, the fallout from the hack was significant with losses of approximately $90 million reporting in Bitcoin liquidations. Wow, so I guess people jumped on it and uh, <laughs> got liquidated. Despite the seri seriousness of the incident, SEC Chairman Gary Gansler did not mention this report in his responses to members of Congress about the, the hack. This raises serious questions about the SEC's stance on cybersecurity and its accountability in the face of such incidents. Imagine what the SEC would do if a public company became aware of a security vulnerability, failed to fix it and was then hacked. Would the SEC have any re uh, reaction? Some news on Luna Classic. Finally, Luna Classic picks up 13% despite trashed key Terra Classic proposal. It was a proposal to limit the quantity of validator nodes uh, was labeled as lacking teeth due to unpunishable action. Not much happening on Luna Classic. Uh, the community continues to try to improve it and everybody's hoping that it's going to, you know, pump. But uh, it's basically a chain that is fighting for survival there is some work being done on it but uh will it be revived hard to say it might pump um uh, over the bull market on the back of everything else but uh what's going to happen to it in the long run is uncertain if no development proceeds to be done on the chain then it's going to die um and the population the the group of people that is trying to revive it simply won't be able to maintain the hype long enough for it to sustain itself. Last weekend, Terra Luna Classic rejected a key governance proposal to prevent the chain's validators from launching multiple validators on the network. Um, proposal 12101 seeks to impose a single validator rule, which has been called unactionable and pointless by certain validators like Solid Vote. While most members agree the proposal to limit validator nodes has good intentions, the strategy would be hard to realize because TerraChain validators can simply ignore the implemented rules, breaking down the voting results. Almost 38% of Terra Classic community members voted yes, while 37 voted no, and another 21 voted uh, vetoed the proposal. So there you go. This is. Uh, there is a monopoly on this chain uh, on on the nodes and I guess those with the most uh, tokens with the most tokens Luna Classic tokens can do whatever the heck they want and control the chain and so that's why this proves to be a chain that is not viable not sustainable because who's going to want to put their money into a, a protocol into a, a chain that is controlled by few people who do as they please. So this doesn't look too great for Luna Classic. That's it for today's roundup. That's all the news. We're going to conclude it with Luna Classic. Make sure to smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. Do consider joining uh, the channel, becoming a member. If you are feeling generous, hop on, hit the join button, become a crypto kitten or a crypto cat. But whatever you do, make sure to share the content with everybody else and uh, come back for more tomorrow. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.